Hello, my name is Borbala from followyourownrhythm.com. Um, if you are here watching this, I'm assuming that you are a spiritually minded person. So um, you like to grow as a person, you like to learn things from life. Um, so if that is the case, and this video is just for you, today I'm going to go over 11 spiritual lessons that you can learn um, from this whole experience of this COVID-19 coronavirus world pandemic that we're facing. First of all, I hope that you are all well and safe and that you're dealing with this crisis in a healthy way. Um, I know that this is hard for a lot of us. I know that there are a lot of challenges and obstacles that we're facing. So it's really hard to stay positive. And I know it's not all good times and a lot of people are actually really depressed um, during this time from this from this pandemic. And you know, I have my good days and bad days. Um, there are days that I'm really sad and I miss a lot of things about life and I feel uncertain about the future because we have no idea what's going to be happening. Um, there are times where I even lose hope, <laughs> right? Like I'm like, okay, well, I don't even have hope anymore for anything. Um, but those are my bad days. And then I have really good days where I'm hopeful and I'm positive and I feel good about the things that not even the things that are happening, how can you feel good about that, but the opportunities that we're getting from this whole experience, which is what we're going to talk about today. I just wanted to relate to everybody on that and that um, we miss our old life, right? Like, it's okay. We miss our old life. We miss people. We miss friends and family. We miss going out. We miss traveling. We miss having our freedom to do whatever we want to do. So that is that is totally okay. Um, and... It is what it is, right? Like, here we are. However, despite all of these negatives that are happening, I believe that this experience is opening the doorway to learning some very, very crucial and essential spiritual lessons, ones that would otherwise take years or even decades to learn. And here we are, we have, I don't know how many months, but we have this time where we can actually learn all of these lessons now if obviously we choose to. So I believe that this experience is here to catapult our spiritual growth, our spiritual evolution, to raise our level of consciousness and to be more connected to our true selves, to our higher selves. And when we can do that, we can also help make this world a better place. So no matter how bad the situation seems, I really can't help but see the possibilities for growth and transformation. Um, and if anyone knows me, then you know that I'm totally into growing as a person, learning from all experiences, you know, nothing is wasted, and really just using this opportunity to transform and become better. However, not everyone is going to learn these lessons. If you're a person who believes that life is out to get you, or life is here to punish you, or it's here to screw your whole life up, or you're just complaining all the time, then you're probably not going to be learning these lessons. But if you're a person who believes that there is gold and a gift and treasure um, and lessons in all of life, all of life experiences, then you're gonna learn a tremendous amount from this. So I guess the first step to learning these spiritual lessons is to accept that every single life experience holds within it treasure and gift and an opportunity to learn and grow. Um, okay, so I have, 11 essential and crucial spiritual lessons that we can learn from this coronavirus pandemic and world lockdown, quarantine, all of the above, whatever you want to call it, um, that's going to totally enhance and catapult your growth as a person. Um, it's going to make you wiser, braver, stronger, calmer, more confident, more patient, uh, more loving, more free, more happy, and the list goes on. So there's a lot of positives to this. Um, also, I just want to say that these are lessons that I currently and actively am learning from this experience. So while I do, I, this this is general, but it's also coming from my own personal experience. And um, I'm just going to kind of give you a quick overview of them. I'm not going to go into great detail. I don't want this video to be too long. But if you do want me to like elaborate on them and go into um, deeper detail, then just send me an email or leave a comment below and let me know which topic you wanted me to elaborate on and then I can make another video on that. All right, so the first spiritual lesson that we can learn from this experience is to let go of attachments and find happiness within. So this is such a big one because 
we are so used to depending on the outside world for our happiness. Um, and now that everything is like closed and a lot of our normal things that we like to do or that we depend on to have a good time is basically unavailable to us, it's really forcing us to like find happiness within and find contentment within and find peace within ourselves. Find like joy in the moments that we create from from our inner selves rather than from some external source. So we usually derive our happiness from outside things, right? External things. We can't really shop. We can't really go out. We can't hang out with our friends. There's so many things that are cut off that we're attached to, to feel a certain way. And finally, we're sort of forced to look within ourselves and find joy from within because we're so miserable, right? Like we're kind of miserable sitting at home with not much to do. And we have either we could be miserable or we can choose to go within and see how can I find happiness within, like radiate happiness within. How can I find joy in the things that I have around me? How can I find joy in what I see? How can I find joy within myself? How can I be more of a happy person without needing anything on the outside? How can I find things more endearing and more funny and more positive? And how, so how can I change my energy and my perception and my attitude to make me happy? How can I make myself happy without needing to depend on anything on the outside? So I think that's like a huge lesson that we can all learn. And I think this one we're kind of learning with or without wanting to, right? Like we need to kind of find things that can add value to our lives that aren't necessarily based on anything external. Because once that external thing goes away, then our happiness is gone too. So I think we're learning that we can no longer attach ourselves to these outside things that are fleeting and passing and temporary and we need to find joy in things that are forever which is you it's your perception right like if you see things from a certain way if you see things from in a certain light um and if you derive your energy and your aliveness and your sense of passion and enthusiasm from within yourself not based on something on the outside but it already comes from within and then there, it's a bonus when good things are happening on the outside then I think that's where we find our power because your power lies within you, not outside of you. Okay, spiritual lesson number two that we can learn from this experience is to learn to love yourself. Um, yeah, so especially if you're going through this pandemic by yourself um, and you've been cut off from the world. So if you're going to work, then you still have some contact with people. But if you are not going to work and you're just at home, then you are pretty isolated from other people. This is a really good time to learn to love yourself, like learn to love all of you and to love your own company. Because right now we're going through a time where like we don't really have access to a lot of people, like our friends and family and whatever. And so we miss them. We miss hanging out with people. And a lot of times we miss other people. Well, obviously, because we genuinely like them. Like, yeah, human connection, like it's so important. But a lot of times it's also because we're escaping ourselves and it's because we're escaping our loneliness. Like we we don't know how to be alone. We don't know how to be with ourselves. We we don't enjoy our own company. Our, our own company is usually not good enough unless there's somebody with us. Like it's so hard for us to enjoy a moment, to enjoy a movie, to enjoy cooking, to enjoy a project, to enjoy a walk outside without wanting to have someone there with us to experience it with us or to share it with. Now, I get it, like that's a beautiful thing to share with someone and there's nothing wrong with wanting to share your happiness and your joy with another person, but to be sort of attached to that and dependent on that for you to have fun and for you to enjoy that moment, that's where the problem lies. So this experience is really calling us to learn to love ourselves. Just love all of you, like love time with yourself, um, love laughing by yourself, love watching TV and having a good time, love soaking up the sun from your balcony, love taking a walk outside, like just enjoy all of those things that you would otherwise prefer to do with other people and just really, really 
love it on your own and know that it's enough. Know that your own company is enough. It's good enough. Like you don't need anything else to make this moment better because you, your beautiful company to yourself is already enough. It's already perfect. It's already enjoyable. It's already pleasant. Okay. So the third lesson that we can learn from this experience is to reconnect to who you truly are. So reconnect yourself, rediscover yourself. You have so much time on your hands, most likely. Even if you're working, you're still coming home after work and you can't really go anywhere. So either whether you're working or not working, you probably have a lot of time on your hands. So if that is the case, then this is a perfect opportunity to go within, self-reflect, um, rediscover your interests, rediscover your desires, your priorities, um, reconnect to a deeper part of you through maybe meditation, through journaling, contemplation, uh, self-reflection, you know, just really taking this opportunity to reflect, reflect on your life, reflect on the past, reflect on the future, reflect on your feelings about everything, your emotions, just sitting with yourself and listening to your, your intuition, your inner voice, getting in touch with that deeper part of you, getting in touch with your higher self. Um, you know, the world is shut down and we're sort of forced into stillness. We're sort of forced into this slower pace. And I think this is so perfect for personal growth and like introspection. Like take the time, take the time to just be with yourself. You know, just, just discover your passions, discover your interests, discover who you are. Just any sort of personal growth work um, you can do right now. Because we're usually so busy and we're on the go. We're working, we have this, we have this, we have this, and all the free time we have, we already make plans for any free moment that we have. We go out and so we just always occupy our time with activities. And we so seldom just sit with ourselves and just reflect on who the hell we are and what it is that we want out of life. So I think this is a perfect opportunity to do that. Okay, so the fourth spiritual lesson that we can learn from this experience is so important. I think this is like the most important one, but it's to live in the moment. So, yeah, what else can you do? So we have no idea of what's gonna happen, when this is gonna happen, when things are going to change, like what is going on, okay? And the only option, honestly, that we have is to just be present in this moment. It's really, this experience is really, really teaching us to not focus on the past because the past is gone. Like, yeah, we miss the past. We miss how life used to be. And we wish that that came back and that we could get there in the future. So that's from, we're jumping straight from the past, straight into the future, and we skip out on the present. And it's like, well, here we are. Like, we're in the present. Like, this is where we actually are. Not in the past and not in the future. So, um, and, and we have no idea about the future. We can't even make plans for the future because we don't know anything. Like we never know anything about the future. Like the future is always uncertain, but like our mind at least can attach itself to something. But now our mind can't even attach itself to anything because it's so up in the air. So it's kind of like we're super forced to just like be here now. And, and, and what comes with being here now and living in the moment is accepting what is happening accepting the as is so accepting life as is accepting your situation the way that it is for what it is not wishing it was different not wanting to be somewhere else not trying to escape from it or distract yourself from it or run away from it but just truly being 100 percent here right now another part of living in the moment is learning how to slow down because how do you live in the moment if you're constantly go, 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 thinking, doing things, right? So you first have to slow down and adopt a slower pace of life, which I don't think is going to be hard for anyone because we don't have many places to go, many things to do. So you start with slowing down and that will allow you to open your mind up to the things that are around you, open your eyes to everything that's actually around you, within you your feelings, and that's when you're present is when you start to pay attention, right? You start to observe 
life. You start to just get in touch with the present moment. You get in touch with the sunlight shining in, with the birds chirping outside, with animals, nature. It's so easy to get in touch with the present moment through observing nature. Um, you observe the sounds, you hear the sounds, you feel your feelings, you, you really just slow down and you learn how to be still. So learning how to be still is sort of equivalent to just being, just be with yourself. You know, don't try to have every moment have like a purpose or you need to accomplish something or you need to get a result or you need to like occupy your mind or do something, but just simply allowing yourself to just be. So sitting on your bed and looking out the window, there's no purpose to it. The only purpose to you sitting on your bed looking out the window is to just sit on your bed and look out the window. The moment itself is the purpose. There is no end game that you're looking for. Like there's no like outcome. It's literally just to be here now for the reason of being here now. It's really, really hard to explain um, and understand how to live in the moment, right? Like it's, it's hard to like articulate, but um, I don't know. I just have those moments where I just, I'm just being and I'm an acceptance of the moment and I'm present and I'm acknowledging what's happening around me and I'm just taking it in and I'm in this very calm, peaceful state. And um, so, so that's living in the moment, like in the present, but it's also living in the moment, like in a way that um, stop like projecting your fears and all of that and your worries into the future and like, oh my God, what's gonna happen? And how are we gonna get out of this? And all of those fearful thoughts and also being sad and depressed about like the past and like what you miss and what you used to have in your life. So instead of being past and future oriented, just coming, bringing your attention back to the present moment. And I just talked about how you can do that, but I think that um, it's not always just about being and just like looking around, you know, taking everything in, like that's a part of it, but it's just enjoying the moment right? Just living in the moment. Like you're watching TV, you're wa you're here watching TV. Like you're, you're just there enjoying that moment. You're taking a drive into nature or somewhere to get your sanity back. And you're just in your car listening to music, enjoying that moment. So it's really about enjoying the moment and not wishing it was some other way or you were somewhere else. It's just about being here now and trying to make the most of it and make the best of it. Another part of living in the moment is to live spontaneously and sort of more intuitively. So um, obviously a lot of us don't have to go to work. Uh, I don't have to go to work. So I really don't have anything to do other than my things. And I have really um, embraced this idea of living spontaneously. So I'll wake up and I have like a general list of things that I need to get done at some point, <laughs> like throughout the week. But I don't, um, so I wake up and I kind of assess how I feel and I do what I like based on intuitively what I feel like doing. So if I feel like going for a run, I'll go for a run. If I feel like watching TV, I'll watch TV. If I feel like high on energy, I'll do, I'll dance. I don't know. If I'm low on energy, I'll just chill. If I'm feeling inspired, I'll make a video or I'll write a blog post or something. So I always tune into my feelings and, and see where I'm at. And I do an activity based on that because I have the freedom, right? I have the freedom to live spontaneously and intuitively because I have no pressure, no responsibilities really, no time limits, time frame, deadlines or anything like that to get things done. So it's been a really beautiful thing. I know it's important to have structure in your life and like have a schedule. And I do have like a general structure and schedule, but I allow myself a lot of breathing room to like go with the flow right? Get in tune with like the rhythms of life and myself and like what I'm feeling and doing that and just being spontaneous and adventurous with my activities. I mean, there's not many things I can do, but like I get creative. So the next lesson that we can learn from this experience is to learn to see the beauty in everything and to be grateful. Yeah. Um, this is obviously like a shitty experience like it's not ideal by any means right it's not the most pleasant thing to be experiencing in this lifetime however it is super teaching us to 
instead of getting caught up in all of the bad and in how this is wrong and shouldn't be this way and oh my god what's going to happen and what's going to happen to us um just fear and all of that it's really i think inviting us and asking us to take control over our perspective and to choose to see beauty where we would otherwise not find beauty to really be grateful and be in appreciation of what you do have and what you do have access to and always keep in mind like how it could be worse you know we complain about what we don't have and what we wish we had but like what about what you actually do have and if you didn't have it you know would your life totally suck without it like if you didn't have a home and if you didn't have toilet paper or if you didn't have well, you probably don't have toilet paper. See, doesn't life suck without toilet paper? So like even toilet paper, you can be grateful for if you find some. Um, so there's just a lot of things to be grateful for if you choose to focus on that. Um, and you can literally just be grateful for spring coming, right? Like everything starting to bloom and turn green and there's gonna be flowers coming soon. And you can look at it from your window um you can take a little walk outside and you know put a mask on stay away from people there's no harm in that there's no harm in exercise so um yeah just like taking in nature and how beautiful it is is like a great way to stay grateful and just who's in your life what do you have just focus on what you have and what you love just it's just a mindset just being in appreciation and trying to see beauty in the seemingly unbeautiful. I think that's a big, big lesson that we are asked to learn from this experience. Okay, the sixth lesson that we can learn from this experience is a huge one. And this is a hard one, but it's basically to surrender and have faith. So this is like the ultimate spiritual lesson because it's literally having faith is a very spiritual thing to do. Um, having faith basically means that you believe in something bigger than you. You believe in something that you can't see, that you can't prove, there's no evidence for it. You just believe in the goodness of life. You, you know, obviously you believe in God, you believe in the universe, you believe, you believe in a divine plan. You believe in your soul path, like you believe that this is your soul's journey, like that this is where you need to be right now to be going through this. You believe that you have faith that that everything's going to work out and everything's going to, to unfold as it needs to and we're all going to learn what we need to learn and the things that need to happen are going to happen. As ugly as they may seem and as chaotic as they may seem on the outside, you have faith that it's all eventually for the better no matter how hard it is right now that's having faith right and it's so important because what else can you do like what else can you do in this situation than to trust in some sort of divine order because if if you were to look at this with your human mind you would think this is fucked up you're like well why is this happening and this doesn't seem like it has any positives but the moment that you develop this this uh belief this faith that there is a reason for everything that's happening and that you right now right here are supposed to be here experiencing this um and especially that you're watching this video you're supposed to be learning these lessons now all of a sudden it makes sense right um so yeah having faith and then the other part of that is surrendering so uh, just letting it go letting go of control letting go um of trying to control the outcome trying to control timing trying to just be in charge of how everything happens and why is it happening and and giving your power away and letting this stuff control you <laughs> but it's it's really just um just letting it all go and surrendering to okay like whatever happens happens right like i'm gonna stay positive and i'm gonna be productive and proactive and all of that good stuff but i really ultimately don't have control so i'm just gonna surrender and trust trust is a big one that everything is going to unfold in the right order and the right timing and that i do believe i have faith that it's going to end well that it's going to end in our favor and in our planet's favor the other part of that is to get comfortable with uncertainty so we try to attach ourselves to 
things, right? Like to outcomes, like we like predictability, we like certainty, we like to know things, we like to control things. That's all a part of the mind. That's all part of ego. Ego tries to attach itself to things so it can identify itself as that. So the soul, however, it likes, it craves unpredictability, it craves mystery, it craves the unknown. Um, that is, that is kind of like you go with the flow. You're going with your soul's agenda by going with the flow, by surrendering. Surrendering is a spiritual energy. When you do that, you are super aligned to this spiritual energy and to your, your, your intuition, your soul, your higher self. Um, so it's when we try to control things and know what's going to happen. That's when we fall out of alignment with our true higher energy, our truth and we get stuck in ego. So another part of surrendering and having faith is to accept uncertainty and almost embrace it. Be okay with the unknown, um, welcome it because change is good. And if we just learn to live in the moment, right? And not focus so much on how the future should be or expecting things or trying to attach ourselves to something, then this should surrendering will be much easier. So all of these lessons kind of like intertwine, like they're all one big lesson, I think, like they're all related, like you can't do one without the other.